everyone, Coach Kim here. Today I'll be discussing with you guys on how to make your character stronger in a shorter amount of time. As most of us know, the Lantern Ride Festival is on its way soon, and I know a lot of you guys are going to be wishing on Ganyu and or Zhongli, so I thought now would be a great time to make this video. Remember that the goal of this video isn't to make your characters peak harder than they already could, but to instead make them playable in the overworld and spiral a bit sooner than later. The biggest mistake that I see new and veteran players make, and that I have made when I first started, was farming artifacts early. I'm not just talking early in the game in terms of adventure rank, although you shouldn't do that either. I mean early on in a character's development. For the most part on DPS units, the main stats on artifacts are consistent across the cast. Attack percent sands, elemental damage goblet, and crit damage or crit rate circlet with the substats generally consisting of more attack percent, crit rate, and crit damage. I want to specifically talk about crit damage percent and attack percent. What does crit damage percent and attack percent have in common? It's the fact that they both use percentages to scale their value. As we all should know, percentages have greater values when the base that they're deriving off of is bigger. 10% of 100 is very different from 10% of 1000. The greater the base, the greater the value a percentage would yield. What this ultimately means is that even if you farmed all of your artifacts, if your character isn't leveled and your weapons aren't leveled, the amount of stats that the artifacts are actually giving you is very minimal. This means that we need to raise the base stats before raising stats that involve percentages. Firstly, we need to ascend our characters and weapons to raise our base attack before anything else. Of course there are exceptions to everything. If your healing and shielding supports are scaling off of defense and HP, then upgrading your talents before your weapons will be better since having extra base attack won't do anything. Supports like Sucrose and Barbara can get by just fine with an R5 level 1, thrilling tales of dragon slayers, and can instead opt into upgrading their talents before their weapons. But the general guideline to upgrading your characters should be your character ascension, weapon ascension, and then transitioning into talents and then finally artifacts. Now you might be thinking, don't talents also have percentage scaling? Yes, they do. But the difference between artifacts and talents is the resin efficiency. Let's say you just got your Zhao, and you're looking for a Viridescent Venner set. In that domain, you could either get the Viridescent or Maiden's Beloved. Now you might not be using a healer, let alone a healer that uses that set since the clam set's in the game now. So statistically speaking, you're going to get the artifact that you want 50% of the time since there's only one other set that could be obtained. This essentially means that the resin cost for each domain is actually 40 and not 20. Not to mention that 90% of the time you do get the artifact that you want, it has bad substats. And more than half the time you do get decent substats, they all roll into flat defense or HP. This basically means that for a single good artifact, you're using a thousands of resin. The same can't be said for literally anything else in the game that costs resin. You spend it on blue ley lines, you get your XP books. Yellow ley lines, Mora. Weapon domains, weapon ascension material. So on and so forth. When you spend resin on anything that isn't an artifact domain, you get what you spend. Being unlucky only means getting less of what you want. You can only get unlucky so many times before you eventually get the amount of materials that you need. Every material in this game essentially has a pity system. If you're unlucky and only get blue books when the end goal is to get yellow books, you'll eventually hit the limit due to having the ability to convert your materials into a higher grade. Artifact domains have no such pity. Nothing is stopping the game from never giving you what you want, and that's the reality of it. Again, I just want to restate that I'm not telling you guys to never farm artifacts. You're going to have to do them eventually. In fact, the total time spent on a character's development is actually the same whether you do artifacts at the start or at the end. The entire purpose of this video is to educate you guys on how to make your characters playable in a shorter amount of time. At the end of the day, we're all going to have to hit the artifacts eventually, but we can make the process so much smoother by delaying it until everything else is complete. Since 10,000 resin on artifacts, and nothing else would yield nothing. Inversely, 10,000 resin on raising base stats and talents would actually amount to having your characters be playable in the overworld and Spiral Abyss. If you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thanks for sticking around. This is my first time making a Genshin video. I usually do educational content for League of Legends, but I'm currently branching out into other genres and games. If you like this video, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm. And to everyone participating in the Lantern Night Festival, I hope you get your Ganyu or Zhongli. I personally will be wishing for Zhongli, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.